debate over fuel subsidy continues to inundate the policy since the pronouncement of his removal by President Bolami Tinubu in his inaugural speech. Nigerians have been struggling with the effects of the removal of fuel subsidy, which has translated into fuel hike triggering a rise in the cost of living across the country. Some have suggested a reversal of the policy until adequate provisions are made to stabilize the economy. Chamung Dabeng reports. Several analysts have sustained the argument that fuel subsidy removal was the right thing to do to free resources for the critical sectors of the economy, like infrastructure, health, and to help propel economic growth. However, since the subsidy removal, Nigerians have had to deal with hardships attributed to the hike in the cost of fuel. The federal government introduced palliatives to be distributed to the poorest Nigerians to cushion the effects of the subsidy removal. However, despite government's attempt to bring some succor to people in difficult situations, many Nigerians remain skeptical that the palliatives will provide some relief to their struggles in life. First of all, they said um, remove uh, subsidy gone. You are removing without preparing. They told us they lied to us that market forces will bring it down. How will market forces bring it down when we are not producing? First of all, we have been having economists who have been speaking effective English every year in, year out. We have nothing. Come to the village. I'm from the rural community and I go and see what the people at the rural community are going through. Have we ever bothered ourselves on how we're going to take care of them? And Nigerians beg us. We are hard-working people, for God's sake. We are hard-working people. Why should palliative worry brought it? Did it work? Now you are bringing palliative. How many people are going to collect this palliative? How many? Is it the farmers in the village or the people in the city? What are the modalities of sharing this? Where is the data? First, I don't even believe that the first subsidy in the first place is calm. That's what I believe. And like as you said, whether first city can come back to Nigeria. Like I don't believe. But I know if it's true that they're first of today, then I believe it should come back. Because with the way things are going now, I don't think uh, many people can survive this. Let, let us be realistic. We don't need that kind of palliative. Let them use all the money to go and repair our refinery. Let them do the refinery. Let it keep, keep, keep working so that the, the everything can work. By, by providing palliative, providing which palliative? Somebody was saying some time ago that they are going to give us 80,000. Tell me what is 80,000? Palliative itself, in my view, is not the best for any government. We needed something that can sustain, because when you talk about sustainability of an issue, palliative is not a sustainable thing continuously. It has a time span in economics. You do it, but for how long will you continue the palliative measure vis-a-vis -vis the inflationary trend, vis-a-vis -vis the escalating uh, cost of living? Are you going to continue with the palliative? There is no society that will continue palliative, palliative, palliative. That's not a good economic policy. A good economic policy has to be well thought out idea managerially. The recent Consumer Price Index report released by the National Bureau of Statistics show that Nigeria's inflation rate has sustained an upward trend with the latest figure hitting an all-time high of 22.79 percent with a direct correlation in the cost of living. Even though the federal government has reassured Nigerians that the price of fuel will not rise above the current price following calls for further price hikes by independent oil marketers, financial consultant Dr. Husseini remains skeptical of the government's reassurance. However, economist Dr. Aliu Audu has a different take. Subsidy, as we say, is not the best for any government. But in any case, giving subsidy to those whom subsidy is due to, I have no problem with that. All right? If it's back in a way that the average or the generality of people that is meant for, that's okay. It is done everywhere, even in the most advanced country. And no country leaves its economy in the hands of demand and supply. No country. I'm more on the side of independent marketers who are saying it is likely. Because they are on the street. They know what is happening. They are the major importers. All right? Because you and I know uh, it's not once, it's not twice. The government has said no. NMPC has said no, and the thing comes to fruition. You know that very well. So I am, I am more in agreement with independent marketers than NMPC. And 
even the government. Independent marketers association, there's a profit element. Independent marketers. So they are looking at their own pockets. Government, however, looks at the interest of Nigerians. So why don't we look, listen to the government? Because if the government says um, it shouldn't exceed a particular amount, or let's say 600 of, or so, then they will have measures in place. They have the price control board that will regulate anybody that is trying to uh, outsmart uh, you know, the market. Taking up subsidy doesn't mean the government cannot give palliatives to independent marketers. You could give them uh, tax-free landing concessions. You could give them a lot of uh, uh, palliatives, a lot of economic incentives to bring in fuel. Because if you're importing anything to Nigeria, you must pay an import duty. Many Nigerians have called for the reversal of the fuel subsidy removal plan, pending when the government can take proper measures to ensure a smooth transition for Nigerians. Analysts, however, say that a reversal in the suspension of the fuel subsidy may worsen the suffering of Nigerians and render efforts of the federal government redundant. Chamun Dabeng, Trust TV News, Abuja.